So there's the doublet antenna fed with 600 ohm open wire line. And I've built a sliding tensioner board, which is weighted. And that maintains a good tension on the feeder so it doesn't touch the roof, especially if there's snow on the roof in winter. So it's uh, quite nicely arranged, actually. And you can add or subtract transmission line length by splicing in sections of line or cutting out sections of line. This is again is a temporary connection. I've lengthened it, so I have to add some more spacers here. I'm just experimenting with the impedances that I'm getting on the tuner. This really should be up here more to give it more tension on the vertical hang part, but the problem is the antenna is a little bit long and I've pulled it all the way up to the insulators on, on against the pulleys. They don't uh, can't be tensioned up anymore. I know it can be pulled up a little higher, which would take the slack off. But uh, for now, this is this is fine. So I'm going to add a few more uh, bricks on on this board, so in case there's wind, it won't uh, slide. But I mean, this this is is pretty solid. So this, this is facing east. That antenna is way up there. It's going to have a good clear open space to radiate, especially in that direction. I'm doing a test at 3990 kilohertz. So it's just the top end of the 80 meter band. You got 1.6 amperes on each leg of the feeders, so they're very, very well balanced. And at 100 watts power level, that represents an impedance of 39 ohms. That's the resistive component of the tuned impedance on the feeders at this frequency and length. This point here on the Smith chart is the impedance of the doublet at the, at the center of the doublet where the insulator is before the feed line begins. And uh, that impedance is transformed by going around the Smith chart 123 feet which works out to this point here. And the real part of that impedance is 39 ohms. And this is 600 ohms which is the normalized impedance of the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So it matches well. The other bands are better because 40, 20, 40, 20, 15, and 10, these are the final impedances at the uh, tuner. Most of these are on the inductive side. So the Johnson tuner works very well there because it's capacitive uh, with a series and shunt capacitors on the divider taps. And most of these work down to real components which are larger than 39 ohms, but less than 600. So a few hundred ohms, which is perfect for the tuner to deal with. So the problem one is the 80 meter one, but uh, it's working quite well.